Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, so um, so I so tell us about so you you study microplastics. Yep. Um, what why why how did you get to microplastics why? as your thing? That's a great question. Um, so the reason how I ended up in microplastics was. Before I studied environmental scientist, I was a botanist. Um, so I used to study how plants and microbes interact, primarily trying to see if we can develop biofertilizers as well as biopesticides um, for different like plant diseases that do occur with food crops. However, part of the fun thing that I did was doing urban agriculture uh -huh. um, in Camden, New Jersey. So I ran an after-school program with a bunch of students from like fourth grade all the way through 12. And this started in undergrad or when did this start? This started in my master's. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was running this program as just like a side gig and I really enjoyed it. But one thing that we often noticed in the soil was plastic, which huh. made me wonder how the heck did yep. plastics end up there yep, to begin yep, yep. with. And so um, being very curious about that, I started looking for research opportunities that focus on plastic and soil, but it wasn't something that was big at that yeah. time. Yep. Um, it's now a hot topic. So <laughs> I ended up finding like a lab that did something similar with like a foreign pollutant in soil systems, and they particularly studied nanomaterials. So I was just like, oh, that'd be interesting to see if I could just like transfer some of those skills yep. to plastics within the soil environment. And then the more I spent time in it, the more I realized it's a fate, but it is also kind of like a purgatory for plastics that enter coastal environments. Right, right, right. So I decided to pursue more of that research. That that's cool. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So th and that's a great one for you guys. So I also, when I was an undergrad, I really got interested in ecological restoration, mm -hmm. and um, uh, th but there really wasn't anybody where I was doing my undergrad that was really doing that, and um, and so a similar to teammate, I. Uh, knocked around and eventually got uh, invited to um, uh, not invited that sounds like that sounds very majestic <laughs> like, I said like can I wash your crappy test tubes and the, the, the 40th lab I knocked on the door the 40th one said yeah okay and and they were doing ecotoxicology so they were yeah. doing oil spill stuff and so it wasn't restoration but it was it was kind of like it was, yeah, yeah it's related and yeah. so and so that's a great one for you for you all when we're thinking about as you're going forward it's like and it's not it's not exactly what they want, but it's kind of similar. Yeah. And sometimes that can take you to cool places. So, um, so good. Okay. So, so, so you're doing that, and and you're doing the urban gardening and stuff. And then, and you're like, I love grad. I love I love college so much. I want to stay in it for a PhD program. That wasn't how that worked. But <laughs> <laughs> um, interestingly enough, I never knew what a PhD program is. To give context, I'm a first generation student, so it's like. I didn't know what a PhD was. I mean, I kind of did know because my professors had them, but right. I didn't know it was something that I could pursue. Right. Um, it wasn't until I took a Saturday class because I hate myself. Um, <laughs> really, I was just curious about ichthyology, and it, it only happened on Saturdays, and I was obsessed with silicates at the time, um, and I really wanted to take this course, so I took it, but I didn't realize it was a graduate level <laughs> course as a junior. And I was just like, oh my goodness, what am I doing here? Because I had never been in a class where someone challenges everything. And my professor was the kind of person who would make us read papers and then would be like, okay, what do you like about it? And I was like, oh, it's great because of these things. He's like, what did you hate about it? And I was like, you can, you can hate, you hate about paper. This. You know, I really <laughs> thought that just because it's published, it's like solid. I didn't understand that science is like a living being. It changes over time totally. at the time. So he really like instilled that in me. And I felt like I was picked on a lot in the class because he, he would always call on me to have an opinion, largely because I was a quiet person. <laughs> and at the end of the course, he told me I should pursue a PhD. Um, and that's when I realized, oh wow, this could be something for someone like me. Um, and then I did a master's because trying to ex explain that to my immigrant parents that I'm getting a PhD <laughs> and they're like, I thought you were going to be a medical doctor. Um, <laughs> um, so I did a master's um, to just kind of establish whether I really did like research. And as I was doing that, I realized I really like education as well. And I liked the idea of having agency over environmental problems that affected me as a child, that affected my community, and that was affecting the community that I was working with. 
Totally. And I realized if I wanted to merge those two worlds, getting a PhD might be a really great step in the right direction for that. So, yeah. Cool, cool. I love it. Yeah, so I, um, I also first generation uh, college goer, and uh, my family didn't understand, or did, didn't, you know, the college thing was a strange thing. My original plan was not to go to college, and then things changed, and like, I guess I should go to college or something. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I just by luck ended at UCSB. And I think I, I tell you guys this the other day. I, I think I told you guys that, that it was. I, I to this day I have no idea why I applied to UCSB. It was it was it was it was, it was, it was no, not even that. I mean I, I like the ocean. I like the ocean. Why well, was the coast? I should. I, that's what I meant to say. Yes. yes, it was because of the coast. No, but it was. I think it was just far away, and I wanted to go away from home. And and that's I don't. Valid. But I don't know why I wasn't. I didn't pick like Irvine or San Diego. I I, I don't. It's anyway. But regardless, um, uh, another great example of taking a chance and yeah. just sort of ending up places. But but yeah. I, I, much of my uh, uh, extended family doesn't, yeah, the whole idea of higher ed. So you just want to do this, you don't do any work in the summer? Is that what's going on? You just, you just eat bonbons yeah. and everything? Must be great to be you, you know, like that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Cool. Um, uh, but I would say, but for me, like outside of research, the coast was always important. So I was born in San Francisco, and our, our first house was in Daly City, which I don't know if you guys know the San Francisco Bay Area. It's one of the foggiest places in the U.S. It's like 300 days of the year it's fogged in, oh and so I love fog. <laughs> my, my wife like hates fog, but but, but I love fog. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. So I, I very much, at a very young age, I, I really liked the fog and I liked seeing the cliffs. Now I know those cliffs were all covered with non-native ice plant from South Africa that's taken over everything and pompous grass and all this. But as a kid, it was like, this is a magical place. And it still is a magical place, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's neat about our environment, the coast and other elements, even when they're tweaked, even when they're, they're effed up and broken and messed up, there's still majestic things. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a hard one from a management perspective to talk about because we don't want anything to be okay, but at the same time, even a damaged landscape has has tremendous worth so as a kid i just thought it was all awesome but but um yeah i tried to a few times like kind of go elsewhere mm -hmm. and i i psychologically we're talking about the importance of of relaxation and all kinds of i i uh i love to go to the mountains do a lot of backpacking but i psychologically i don't feel well when i'm i mean i don't live at the beach right now like that, but but if i'm just Mentally far from the ocean, I, yeah. I just, it's like something's, I feel like I'm visiting. The other yeah. places are cool, but I, I don't feel like I'm attached. Whereas the, the coast, and for me, and my family, particularly the California coast, I'm attached. Can I get the laptop? Sorry. Can I, um, yeah, yeah, please. Laptop, please, 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 please. Uh, so good. So, um, what else? Uh, so, so, so tell me about your relationship with the coast. So, so, uh, <laughs> Yes. So, so why UCSB? Why are you here? Well, how did you How did you find that you love tacos on the beach? Oh wow, that's a great question. Um, I'm a city kid. Grew up in cities my entire life. When I first moved to Santa Rosa, I was like, "What the heck is this?" <laughs> I was very confused, um, largely because I was like, "Everything's very slow moving." Also, the lack of diversity. <laughs> Everywhere I went, people were like, "Wow." you're different, um, which kind of like made me uncomfortable. So even as I described initially, my experience in Santa Barbara was like, I felt like I was a held breath, like I was always holding my breath um, anywhere I went because it was very obvious I wasn't from there. Um, so at first it was just very contentious and much of like how I ended up choosing Santa Barbara was um, me, um, what would you call it? Um, me just looking for a graduate program. Uh -huh. at, worked well with me right, right. and find, finding a lab. I really wasn't thinking about location, which I highly recommend that you do if you consider grad school because you're committing to at least five years <laughs> there. Um, That's so fast. Five years is so fast. Honestly, yeah, five years flies <laughs> by, especially with a pandemic. Um, but it was, at first it was just very disorienting for me, right. um, but I've always somewhat had a relationship with water. Um, because I used to competitively swim as a kid. Um, I was a swimmer in high school. I always found peace in water. That was something that I did. 
every freaking day and I freaking loved yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, to give you context, I'm Eritrean by nationality, so I used to go to Eritrea to see my father and we would spend time by the Red Sea and I would occasionally go swimming and snorkel there and it's very, very beautiful. So that in itself like made me really fond of the coast and being really fond of like the ocean. It's, it's something that's always calmed me. And even like to when you were speaking about how you've always been connected to the coast and I haven't always been connected to the coast. I remember the first time I was like, what's the point? And when I moved to Santa Barbara and the fact that my office is not far from the ocean yeah, yeah. and I can just like walk there when I'm frustrated and just like take deep, deep breaths, just stare at the ocean and instantly feel relaxed kind of made me realize why it's important in the first place. Um, because how in the past I would deal with things would pretty much just go for a walk, you know, in the right, city, right. explore different things. And in itself also finding calm in the chaos, but really it was just, I would like to say that the ocean really taught me how to be still and how to like appreciate stillness. And so that for me was establishing my relationship with the coast. Cool. Because I feel like my relationship has always been fragmented with nature, largely be, being from a city. Um, and just getting to spend so much time next to the ocean, which is such a beautiful thing, um, has taught me a lot about how important it is and like all of the benefits that it just... The rejuvenation and... It's, yeah. yeah, it's truly amazing. Like just swimming in the ocean and I don't know, being carried. I like to think about how like yeah, the yeah. ocean like can sink ships but also can carry ships. Like it's just really fascinating to see like how majestic and wonderful it is. Yeah. So now I'm with you. I I, I told yeah, I mean, one of my favorite things is to float at the beach or in the pool even whatever and just uh, you know the, you know the, those wave patterns yeah. I'll fall asleep like just looking in the oh, water yeah. and then, <laughs> like you know because it's like it's it's so to me at least it's so mesmerizing yeah. and like calming and and uh, uh, where we're going to go on our coastal trip is one of my favorite places on the whole planet. And it, I'll tell you the whole story. It's very sad. My, my friend that uh, was the manager there passed away in the, during the Woolsey fire, or during the Thomas fire, excuse me, Thomas fire. Um, and uh, no, Woolsey fire, Woolsey fire. Um, and uh, last year's trip was the first time we've been able, because of the pandemic and everything, the first time we've gone back since he uh, passed away. But, but um, that place is a really important part this is in Cambria, California, important for me and my family. Uh, when we were growing, when my son was born, some friends of mine, we all had kids at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we were up at Stanford and our other friends were in San Diego and we would all go to meet at this place. And it was awesome, but uh, I would always fall asleep, right? So like, hey, you gotta watch the kids. And I'd be like, okay. Because <laughs> anytime the waves roll, I, I mean, I'm just like, yeah. it's like a sound machine. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, kabonk. Yeah. So um, I, I can fall asleep anywhere uh, on the beach. And I'll, I'll tell you one quick story, and then uh, we can ask if you guys have questions. But one year I took, um, wait, was it this year? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, so one year I took this class, where I took you guys to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a, a, a four day trip. Barely had enough money. We stayed in like hostels the whole time and everything. And so I screwed up mm -hmm. the, um, I screwed up the planning. And, and we were, we were we flew into Oahu, the island of Oahu, and then we spent most of the trip because I wanted to take I took the students to this fish market, the, the 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 largest fish live tuna market in in the U.S. and and they only they're only open at like four in the morning, so you have to go early. So I said, oh, we'll go there, mm -hmm. and then um, but I planned the flight. Said, okay, we'll get in at like one in the morning or two in the morning or something like that. Flying to the airport and the market's very close to the Honolulu airport. And then like, you know, put our bags in a thing and we'll get a taxi over there and get like some coffee, hang out for an hour and then go on the tour and then come back and get on the plane and fly to the island. So we don't need, so we can save money, no need to have a hotel, <laughs> right? I was so, I thought it was so brilliant. Mm -hmm. I had the times wrong. Oh, no. So we landed at like 8 p.m. and we had like, or no, like like 7 p.m. We, we, we had like almost 12 hours. And, this, and this, I was like, oh, uh... I kind of knew, like, just before we got the plan, look at the table, like, wait, this time doesn't seem right. Like, that's what you bought. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So anyway, so, um, so I was like, what do you guys want to do? We can hang out at the airport for, you know, all night. They're like, let's go to 
Honolulu. So I'm like, okay, so we jump on a bus, go to Honolulu, and and all the stuff that we'll talk about in our class about the urban right next to the natural and the people and the stress. So eventually we go down to, um, uh, so, so then now it's like one in the morning and everybody's like falling asleep. Like, oh, God. <laughs> like what are we doing? We went, went to a lobby and the hotel guards are like, what the hell are you kids doing? Get out. He's like, okay, so, you know, so, so we, we walk out. And so we, we end up on the beach in Waikiki. Oh. And so we're sitting there and we're like, what are you doing? And we're like, oh, this is cool. And the beautiful sound of the ocean yeah. and all this awesome stuff. And, uh, and a very steep beach because of erosion. Mm -hmm. In fact, for a few decades, we sucked, beat, uh, sucked sand from Manhattan Beach in Los Angeles, put it on a tanker, and sent it over to Waikiki and dumped Manhattan Beach sand on Waikiki to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of interesting stories here. But, but, um, but uh, so we're all sitting there with the students, and I sat down on this sand dune, and because I love the sound of the ocean, I fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I woke up, like, I woke up because the water was starting to hit my toes. Right? Like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, like, whoa, whoa. and then I'm like, oh my God, like totally irresponsible. I, we, should be, we shouldn't be recording this actually. You know? I, I've never told it this. Story. So, so I said, um, so I was like, oh God, yeah, I fell asleep, whatever. And I jump up and I'm like, and half the students are asleep on the sand oh next, next to me, next to me. And the others are like, you know, just like, it's like a, it's like a, a boardwalk kind of, kind of strand kind of thing. And they're sitting there talking and just having a good time drinking coffee and stuff. So I'm like, oh, oh, oh God, my God, oh, hey, you guys, is there a bathroom around here or whatever? Like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, yeah, the hotel guys are totally cool and everything. It's like, oh, they're all right. They're like, oh, yeah, after, after the cops are totally cool. And I was like, the what, wait, what? What happened? Like, oh, yeah, you know, like when the cops and the homeless guys came, I was like, wait, what happened? They're like, don't you remember that? I'm like, no, I think I was asleep. So, uh, so basically, uh, we, we crashed on the beach, and apparently, I took us right to a spot where Five feet away, there was a sign that says no sleeping on the beach. Uh. <laughs> and, uh, and so I fell asleep, and the other students just fell asleep. And then this homeless guy came up and was like, hey, yo, you guys, you shouldn't, like, don't be, don't be sleeping on the beach, right? And, and, and then the cops came up, and then the cops were like, all right, what are you guys doing? Like, oh, we're in town. We're a bunch of people from California. We're here to look at coastal management. And the cops were like, that's so cool. You guys just stay there. And they're talking to the homeless dude. Homeless dude's getting them coffee. They're talking. Wow. So it was, it, was a, it was a very collegial experience. And uh, so this whole thing happened. And so things are done, and, and things, things happened, and, and um, we, we, we go on, fantastic class, go to the thing, and all that great. So I call my dad. So my, my, uh, um, I have a bunch of family from Hawaii, and I used to spend a lot of time over there. Um, like you were at the beach in Eritrea, I was, mm -hmm. I was there. Um, uh, anyway, and so I said, hey dad, uh, and my dad's a, a, a painter, an artist. And when I was young, he, he sold a lot of art in Hawaii. And so we'd go there all the time. And, uh, I said, uh, oh my God, I, I told him the story and he's like laughing his butt off and he goes, wait, where did you fall asleep? So it turns out there's something genetic about this because my dad did his first trip as an artist to Hawaii in like 1972 or four or something, he had no money. So he didn't, couldn't afford a hotel room and he went with his friends and they might've had a cerveza or two and then they ended up falling asleep on the beach exactly where I fell asleep. Oh, so. Really? So we talk about culture. I mean, that, that's a weird culture. I mean, that's not, I wouldn't encourage you to fall asleep on the beach with no. me. But, 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 but the notion of how these things come back and how, and how we talk about memory and how, how this stuff is important yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So the, the coast really does seem to stitch a lot of this together in a very visceral way for um, all kinds of people and stuff. So awesome. Did you get to the tuna market? Yeah, we got the tuna market. Oh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was super cool. Yep. <laughs> cool. Okay. So um, sounds great. So now you guys know a bit about a bit more about us. Anybody have a question before we we go on to our next thing? Any making sense? All right. So don't ever another recorded this question ever. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't don't tell the provost that I fell asleep on the beach with you.